Hello everyone, the story I'm going to share today is a true story from Xuanzang's journey to the West. Xuanzang, a 7th century Chinese monk, traveled west to India to obtain the Buddhist scriptures. Five beacons lined the border of Tang Dynasty. Each one was 30 miles apart, and each had a guardian general. When Xuanzang arrived at the fourth beacon, Bo Long Wang, the guardian general there, told Xuanzang that he needed to find wild horse spring as a source of water as he planned to cross the desert. Bo Long Wang pointed to the direction of the spring and gave Xuanzang a big water bag. Xuanzang left the fourth beacon and walked toward large Mahayanchi desert. The desert was about 250 miles long and had no signs of life. No birds flying above, no animals running around. Not even a drop of water or blade of grass could be seen. Xuanzang entered the vast desert alone and walked from dawn to evening and then from evening to daybreak. In the desert, Xuanzang was accosted by the ghostly hot air. During the day, the sandy wind made it difficult to open his eyes and breathe. At night, ghosts were everywhere and flashed like stars. The floating ghosts were followed by various monsters. It was horrifying. Sometimes, when a monk loudly recited the Bodhisattva Guanyin, the horrifying shadows would have disappeared. But other times, they still flew around. Nonetheless, whenever he recited the Buddhist scriptures with a pure heart, they would all disappear. After 30 miles, Xuanzang was lost and became anxious about not being able to find a white horse spring. When he stopped to drink from his water bag, he accidentally dropped it. Now he had not even a single drop of water. Having no option, the monk headed back toward the fourth weekend to fill his water bag before continuing. Three miles back, he suddenly remembered his vow to never return if he didn't reach Tianzhu. He turned his horse around and with ablated spirits vowed to Buddha, I am your disciple. I would rather walk toward the west and die than walk back home alive. Full of conviction, he continued his journey. Xuanzang and his horse did not drink a drop of water for five days and four nights. They were both dizzy and stricken with high fevers. The monk collapsed in the desert, near dying. He spoke to Bodhisattva Guanyin via his heart. Your disciple isn't going to India to obtain the scriptures for personal benefit or fame. It's just for the sake of saving people. Bodhisattva Guanyin, please show your compassion and help me eliminate disasters on the way. Shortly after he lost consciousness, later that night, a cool breeze hit Xuanzang's body and he woke up refreshed. Too tired, he fell asleep again. He dreamed a giant majestic god clad in armor calling out to him. Why are you not hurrying along, but still lying there? The monk suddenly weakened and set forth on his horse. Just then his horse became out of his control and began to run. Three miles into the spring, they arrived at the side of the spring. Xuanzang was overjoyed and bent over to drink the water. There were also fresh water plants by the spring. So both Xuanzang and his horse were saved. He rested there for a day, filled with water bag, cut some green plants, and was on his way again. Two days later, he made his way out of the desert. On his way to Nalanda Temple in central India, he encountered a more sinister tribulation. He embarked on a ship with 80 some locals to head to Aimuda by way of Ganges River. When the ship had reached the center of the river, 
It was besieged from all sides by ten Paris ships that had emerged from the woody banks. The ship passengers panicked, and some jumped into the river to escape for their lives. The Paris was stunned by Chuanzong's appearance, as they had never seen such magnificent, graceful monk. They decided to kill the monk as a sacrificial offering to their evil god. Xuanzang advised them not to kill, while others on the ship also begged for mercy. It was no use, and the pirates took them all away. After the gang constructed an altar, two of the nine waiting pirates dragged the monk to the top of the altar, thinking that there was no hope of survival. Xuanzang asked the pirates to give him some time and allow him to go to heaven by himself. His calmness and peaceful temperament scared the pirates. The monk sat down tranquilly as he recited Buddhist scriptures and vowed to go to Maitreya's world to listen to the scriptures and then reincarnate into this world again to save the pirates. As he sat there, his main soul flew over the third celestial level of Sumeru Mountain. He saw Bodhisattva, and his heart was full of joy. He looked at the solemn Buddha, and then at the stark human world below. Down below, a dark wind suddenly blew sand and stones around. The trees were uprooted, the river waves became mountains, and the ship was overturned. The pirates were frightened and fell on their knees and prayed. Someone from the crowd said to the pirates, This is Master Xuanzang from the east. Now the gods are angry. Shouldn't you repent now? All the pirates kneeled in front of Xuanzang and called to. The wind slowly subsided. The pirates approached the monk and touched him. Xuanzang returned from his meditation. Seeing Xuanzang was still alive, the pirates jumped for joy and repented. Xuanzang took the opportunity to give them a far lecture. He told them not to sow seeds or retribution for petty personal interests. Afterward, some pirates threw away their weapons, and others received the five precepts. They all abandoned their previous bloodthirsty cult and chose the righteous far. Thank you for listening to the story. More touching stories will be ready for you if you just subscribe it. Thank you again.